Let's make the bass from Clean by Taylor Swift. I think it's a really effective and unique bass. Unique because it has a unique collection of frequencies and effective because it sounds really deep and big, but it's actually not playing in the sub frequencies at all. There's nothing between 40 and 50 hertz, uh, which is usually where a sub would be. But the reason it still sounds deep is because of a phenomenon called psychoacoustics. Uh, and I'll explain more about that later. For now, let's get started and initialize preset. For oscillator one, let's go to factory basic shapes. Let's move this down two octaves to negative 24 semitones and remove all the phase randomization. This is our sub, so we're gonna send this direct out bypassing any of our filters or effects. Open up oscillator two, basic shapes again. This time it's gonna be a triangle. This is kind of the secret sauce to the recipe. Set this to negative five semitones, which is the same frequency as the third harmonic of our sub. So let's hear this. Now we're gonna add two more frequencies, and those frequencies are a fifth and octave above our sub. So to do that, open up oscillator three, go to basic shapes, and for this one, let's move this down an octave below our sub, so negative 36 semitones. Now go into the wavetable editor, and this is, um, this is an octave below our sub right here. This is where our sub is, and then this is where a fifth above our sub is. So click here to add this one, make it nice and tall. And then above this is the octave above our sub. So click here about halfway up, and then you can delete the first harmonic here. And what happens is even though we've deleted the first harmonic, we still hear it. It's like a phantom harmonic because we hear the harmonics above it, the sub here and these two additional frequencies, and our brain kind of fills in the blank. And that's really nice because even though we're not playing a sub, we hear a sub, and that frees up some headroom in our mix. So we can use that frequency area for the kick, which is exactly what Taylor Swift's producers did. So let's hear this now. And let's look at the frequency analysis. So we wanna make it a bit darker. Let's open up frequency, uh, excuse me, filter number one and turn down the resonance all the way. Let's set the cutoff to 20, and then route this only to oscillator two, our triangle. Now you're hearing kind of a little pop or a click at the beginning of the note. That's because the attack is so fast. So let's increase the attack time just a little bit to 0 0.01. Then on the hold, let's put 0 0.02. That just gives it a little bit more punch before it decays. And then for decay, let's set this to two seconds. Turn the sustain all the way down and set the release to 0 0.3. Now I'm gonna make it a little bit steeper by pulling on this little thing here. And let's hear that. So we're getting pretty close. Now we're gonna add some width by using some stereo um, detune. So let's add two voices on oscillator two and set the percentage of detune to 2%. Let's also have phase randomization, but we'll reduce it to 40%. Now on oscillator three, let's do the same thing, two voices, 2% 2 detune. And since this oscillator is a little bit lower, I'm gonna make it a little bit more narrower. Let's go with 30% phase randomization. Now we can also control the width of this by using these uh, stereo unison dials in the advanced tab. So what I'm gonna do is assign those to a macro. So first I'll turn those down, then assign macro one to stereo unison for oscillator two and oscillator three. Now for oscillator three, I'm gonna right click that modulation amount and I'm gonna reduce it to 0 0.7. 
That way we're getting more width on oscillator 2, which is a higher frequency. So let's hear how this sounds. So I'm going to call this macro width. And if you want, you can add even more width by adding in a chorus. Um, but just be careful if you're adding in a chorus, even though we are bypassing the sub. Um, oscillator 3 and oscillator 2 are pretty close to the same amplitude as our sub. And if you have phasing issues, sometimes it'll be a lot louder, sometimes it won't be. And it'll be inconsistent between the left and right channel. So a couple more details for this sound. You'll notice in the original, every time the note changes, there's a little bit of a glide to the note. So we can set this always glide on, and then change the glide time to 0 0.09. Now you hear it kind of bends between notes. So let's change the levels here between the three oscillators. Let's try to balance this out a little bit more. So you'll notice in the spectral analysis here, our triangle is too loud. It's louder than our sub. So let's turn this down quite a bit. Let's turn it down to 0 0.15. And then let's turn down oscillator three just a little bit as well. Let's go with 0 0.45. Let's turn up the master volume a little bit. And that sounds better to me. Now we can make use of these other macros. Uh, you can assign them to whatever variables you want. But uh, usually when I've dialed in the sound how I want it, if I think in the future I might want to change that sound, I'll set a macro to bipolar mode and then assign it to whatever parameter I'm going to change. So for example, if I think I might change the cutoff in the future, I'll hold shift, then click macro 2, swing that over to the cutoff. And now if I set macro 2 to 0 0.5, it's back where I started. And in the future, I can turn that cut off down or up. So I'm going to label this low pass cut off. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.